Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in all things new by Bingaman. We're going to take a look at uh, Chapter 5b on Trinitarian Practice, pages 134 to 149. And uh, let's begin with Block 1 and take a look at the concept of a sundesmas, the perichoresis banding together of reality. There are five syntheses. Man is called to participate in five cosmic syntheses. As the bringing together of all things in Christ. As our task of mediation. Maximus says we've been called to the task of mediation. Performed through church liturgy. Performed through sacrament. It's a fivefold task of mediation. By imitating Christ. It is the imitation of Christ. We are to hold together the divisions of being, becoming the microcosm of creation as participating in a perichoresis unifying activity. We participate in the unifying activity of the triune Godhead. Perichoresis unifying activity. Sundesmas, that which binds something together, the bond of peace. The perichoresis circular band. Sundesmas, the perichoresis banding together of reality. As disciples, we are to overcome that which divides humanity, being integrated into Christ, where self love can be overcome. Overcoming self love, Galatians 3.28. We are one in Christ. We secure and participate in the messianic kingdom. Through Christ, disunity, Caused by sin is overcome. We overcome disunity caused by sin. We must reunite paradise with the sensate, finite world. And we do that through the embrace of Christ. Through the incarnate embrace of Christ within which we participate, within which we are empowered to participate in this perichoresis banding together of all reality. The triune history of God pulls reality together, unites a fragmented reality in order to unveil kingdom of God. So it's a unifying bond of peace. Remember, Irene, the Greek concept Irene, means healing of fragmentation. The Greek Concept for peace means healing of fragmentation. Let's go on to block two. Mediating between heaven and earth. Through the ascension, Christ has united heaven and earth. Integrating all that is sensate. Integrating all that is finite. Colossians 3. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Heaven and earth are united because we are in Christ, who is the second person of the perichoresis triune history of God, and therefore we are in God. We are in God's history through Christ. We are in the perichoresis history. We are hidden with Christ and God. We are restored as mediators. We participate in Christ's ascent unto heaven which bridges heaven and earth together. We have a task of bridging heaven and earth. Christ recapitulated the world in himself through the microcosmic function of all believers who are called to posit this perichoresis unity and who are to participate in that unity. So let's go on. Let's take a look at block two. Note 3, the task of bridging heaven and earth. Christ recapitulated the cosmos within himself. We function as participants in that recapitulation. We mediate between the intelligible kingdom of God and the finite world, the sensible. We mediate between the intelligible and the sensible because Christ has passed through the intelligible ranks in heaven. He makes possible congruence between the world and the eternal Lagos. 
through the pouring out of the gift of true wisdom upon believers. Mediating between God and creation because Christ has appeared before God as Son of Man on the behalf of all humanity. Through Christ's faithful obedience, we as believers are restored. Not through our faithful obedience, but through Christ's faithful obedience, we are restored. In the five mediations, we participate with Christ in his mediating work as microcosms of the world, empowered by grace. Through church, through Eucharist, we make sensate creation part of God's kingdom. It's all about our role as mediators, and it's mediator as microcosm. In other words, we posit the perichoresis world view, that microcosmic world view, that is what we posit through action, through word, through proclamation, through differentiation, through praxis ministry. It's all about telling the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. The triune history of God is at hand. The perichoresis triune history of God is at hand. God is moving through his triune history toward lifting all of creation into reunion with God the Father. Reuniting humanity, reuniting all of creation, reuniting all of life with the Eternal Father through the triune, ongoing perichoresis activity of the Godhead. That brings us to uh, block three, and we take a look at uh, objective sundesmas, that objective banding together of reality, and subjective mediation on the part of the believer equals positing the essence of existence, positing hypostasis, positing kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. So it's objective sundesmas. Subjective mediation, reaching posited hypostasis. We are called to serve as microcosms of Christ operating through and by His Spirit. Through the church's collective spiritual life, we posit the real of divine presence. We tell the world, finitude is not the real. The real is the invisible. The real is the divine presence behind finite reality. The real is kingdom of God. The real is at hand. The real is that which comes again in the parousia, in the ongoing incarnate advent of Holy Spirit. Positing the real of divine presence, we participate in the transformation of the world as theosis. Therefore, the Eucharist becomes a cosmic liturgy. When we participate in the Eucharist, it is not just about humanity. It's about remembering Christ and the fact that Christ has reconciled all of creation, all cosmic reality to the Father. Christ has recapitulated all of creation into the triune activity of the Godhead. The entire world has been drawn into hypostatic union, that essence of existence. Drawing the world into hypostasis, man is the myth mystical church. We posit pratike, practical wisdom, through physike, meditative contemplation. So we posit practical wisdom based on a meditative contemplation of the triune God. By bearing the Trinitarian image of God, which was also emphasized by Moltmann. Praxis in Moltmann. The self is image of the Trinity through messianic alignment. God is drawn into our human history through the incarnate Lagos in order to recapitulate all of creation into the triune Godhead. This is precisely what Bingaman is trying to remind us that Jürgen Moltmann's theology is all about the Trinitarian image of God that we hold as a dunamis potentiality that through the Spirit becomes an energia actuality. 
It all happens according to messianic alignment. God, through Christ, is drawn into our human history. And our human history is lifted up to God through the ascent of Christ to the right hand of the Father. The ascension speaks to the ongoing ascension of all creation to the goal of reunion with God the Father. So the ascension is a cosmic significant event. It speaks to the eschatological ongoing ascension of all creation to reunion with God the Father as we are lifted up within the triune perichoresis activity of the triune God. It's about Trinity, 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 triune doctrine understood on a ontological and cosmological level. It's Trinitarian doctrine understood as perichoresis, a notion taught in 7th century early Christian theology, a theology taken up by Moltmann, a theology further expanded on by Moltmann, as he definitely taught us a Trinitarian theology of hope, a Trinitarian theology of hope within a Trinitarian spirit of hope. The prophetic teacher Jürgen Moltmann led us in recognizing that we possess the image of the triune God and that uh, we are aligned with Christ in messianic alignment and that through the incarnate Lagos the ascension of Christ is about the ascension of the world being lifted into reunion with the Godhead in theosis glorification. This is exactly what we needed. We needed this reminder from Bingaman about the significance of Moltmann's Trinitarian foundational theology of hope. It's a reminder that we need, and so it's a beautiful chapter 5b that does address a critical aspect of Moltmann's theology. In Maximus and Moltmann both, beginning in the 7th century with Maximus, brought into further elaboration by Jürgen Moltmann in uh, 1967 in America for Theology of Hope, 1965 in German, but 1967 in English. Tremendous lesson, that's 5b, pages 134 to 149. We have one more section of chapter 5 that we'll pick up next time, beginning with page 150.